I did not do anything wrong that was not in the interest in all the time that I worked for Enron Corporation that was in the interest of the shareholders of the company. I don't know what he was doing, that he obviously didn't share with me what he was doing. Uh, then indeed, I cannot take responsibility for what he did. Enron still ranks as one of the biggest financial scandals in U.S. history. The chairman, Kenneth Lay, and the CEO, Jeff Skilling, conspired to pump the value of Enron's stock to unsustainable levels using fraudulent accounting practices under the direction of Andy Fastow, the company's CFO. The current economic crisis, the worst since the Great Depression, should never have happened if business and political leaders acted ethically and encouraged prudent investing. I believe the only venue for me is the ride of broken dreams. Oh, you mean the Enron ride? Let's go! We're all gonna be rich! Ah! Broke even! As H.J. Hines Chair of Management at Point Park University, I've developed a new course called Ethical Leadership to address these issues. In order to help students discover what values make a leader ethical and effective, I have produced this documentary about ethical leadership. I have interviewed Paul Hennigan, President of Point Park University, and John Krauss, an executive at the Hines Corporation. My title at Hines is Vice President, Corporate Governance, Compliance, and Ethics. I began with Heinz in 1991, having come here from a private practice. I'm an attorney by trade, a tax lawyer, so I was in the Heinz tax department for about a dozen years doing mergers, acquisitions, corporate finance. And then I uh, moved over to this position in 2005 when the general counsel asked me to uh, come into the law department. We promote ethical standards throughout the organization here at Heinz through our ethics and compliance department, which is a global department and primarily in two key ways, through our communication efforts and then through our education and training efforts. For example, in terms of communication, we try to constantly pulse out a message so that uh, our employees understand how important ethics and compliance are to us here at Heinz. An example of that would be our quarterly newsletter, which we publish in-house, uh, and we send that out to all of our employees and uh, give them examples of ethics and compliance issues here at Heinz. In terms of our education program, we do that primarily in two ways. The first is with an online training tool that we use to, uh, we can send that out to any salaried employee who has a computer at Heinz and give them some online ethics and compliance training. And we also do in-person training. I go out and do a lot of training across the, the, Heinz, uh, the Heinz world. For example, I just returned from a trip to Asia where I was in Indonesia, China, and India, meeting with the uh, presidents of the business units, their direct reports, and then many of the, uh, the employees that uh, work in our facilities in those parts of the world. So it gave them an opportunity to hear the training directly from us and to also ask questions, engage in some dialogue, and hopefully really drive the message home to our employees in those parts of the world. Ethical leadership as a concept for me is honesty and transparency. Uh, it's, it's integrity, it's saying what you mean and mean what you say, and it's developing a sense of trust uh, throughout the university community. Uh, I find that if um, the members of the community trust the leader, uh, they will be willing to follow the leader and pursue the organization's overall goals and vision. I think as business leaders we can improve business ethics by talking about it. Um, these are not terribly difficult conceptual ideas. I think we've just learned that we, we have to continue to communicate with our employees. We have to continue to talk about it. Enron had a beautiful 40 or 50 page code of conduct, but it sat on the shelf. No one ever discussed it, and apparently no one ever put it into practice. And Enron looks to me like uh, the captain first gave himself and some friends a bonus, then lowered himself and the top folks down in the lifeboat, and then hollered up and said, by the way, everything's going to be just fine. Yet another example of fraudulent business conduct was the Bernie Madoff Ponzi scheme, which stole $65 billion from investors. Madoff's fraud did not happen in a vacuum. His accomplices included inept federal regulators, compliant accountants, and careless investment managers who are all guilty of unethical practices. Ultimately, Poor decisions and unethical conduct can create a ripple effect of negative consequences, ruining not only reputations, but destroying people's lives. 
In New York, the son of jailed financier Bernard Madoff has been found dead on the second anniversary of his father's arrest. Mark Madoff was found hanging in his apartment just days after he was named in a new lawsuit by the liquidators of his father's empire. Mark and his brother Andrew were under investigation but hadn't faced any charges in the massive Ponzi scheme, which was the biggest investment fraud in U.S. history. 72-year-old Bernard Madoff was sentenced to a 150-year prison term for embezzling billions of dollars. And this is what we have to get away from. We all have codes of conducts. All the Fortune 1000 companies in the United States have codes of conducts. We have policies. We have procedures. But what we need to do is let our employees know how critically it is, how critically important it is to our shareholders, to our employees, to the company itself, that we follow these rules and regulations and that we, uh, you know, we talk about them on a routine basis so people remember that they are important. So I think communication is key. I find that by uh, discussing issues and decisions in group settings, it forces a, uh, a higher level of honesty and transparency. Uh, when I look at some of the huge uh, lapses in ethical leadership over the past 20 years, uh, the one common theme I see in all of that is that many of those decisions were made behind closed doors, were made by individuals or small groups uh, that were clearly trying to hide something from someone. And by forcing group discussions and group conversations, it uh, instills a sense of honesty and a sense of transparency. I think teaching business ethics can help encourage ethical conduct uh, by letting employees know how critically important it is to the overall operation of the company and the company's reputation in the marketplace. Look, not everybody's born with the same level of ethical understanding. Some people probably get a, a large dose of ethics growing up in their family. Others don't. And I think we shouldn't assume that our, our young new business leaders coming out of colleges and universities have a fully developed understanding of business ethics. So I think it's very important that we challenge them while they're at school to face some of these issues. In order for students to become ethical leaders, they must understand more than why leadership fails. By studying examples of ethical leaders in sustainable organizations, students are able to learn from positive role models. An example of such leadership is Roy Disney. Roy, Walt Disney's nephew, was an ethical leader who transformed the Walt Disney Company by making management accountable. Roy's efforts resulted in hiring Michael Eisner, but eventually he wanted Eisner replaced because he lacked the necessary vision to lead the company. One of Roy's concerns was Eisner's failure to build constructive relationships with creative partners, especially Pixar. Roy Disney resigned from the board of directors. In his resignation letter, Roy Disney called for Michael Eisner to resign as well. Roy believed that Eisner was rapacious, soulless, and always looking to make a quick buck. Disney rallied investors to withhold 45% of the votes cast for Eisner remaining as director of the company. This vote of no confidence is unprecedented, and it forced the board to eventually strip Eisner of his role as board chairman. This led to a change in leadership provided by the new company president and CEO, Bob Iger. Iger was able to fix many of Disney's problems in animation by working more closely with Pixar, which eventually led to a merger. John Lasseter, Chief Creative Officer for Walt Disney and Pixar Animation Studios, gives credit to Roy Disney for fostering creativity at Disney Pixar because he puts his heart and soul into preserving Disney's legendary past while helping moving the art of animation into the modern age of embracing new technology. Studying leaders like Roy Disney should help business students discover the necessary values to be an ethical leader. This requires an integrative approach to learn how people can work together, inspired by a team of leaders that create learning teams throughout the organization. Let's listen to a Point Park student discuss ethical leadership. Teaching business ethics can help because what it does is you're creating a new generation of corporate leaders, corporate leaders that understand uh, ethics in a different way. Uh, they really have an understanding of what needs to happen in an organization. You know, currently most, most organizations go on what their handbook says. There's not really a course on that and your average MBA program doesn't teach it. By giving people an option to learn about ethical leadership, you're changing the corporate structure. I selected the Pittsburgh Zoo 
for my project for the ethical leadership class because I think it really outlines the differences of an old school business and a new more modern company. The Pittsburgh Zoo at one time was owned by the city of Pittsburgh. It had a very top down management style that is not friendly in the ethical business sense. Uh, Past that, Dr. Barbara Baker took over, privatized the zoo, and made it into a flat organization that brought all departments and all people to the table. Employees at the Pittsburgh Zoo all feel like they have a voice, and I think this is a true model of ethical leadership. I think it must be a great time to be an ethics student. Um, there are a lot of opportunities for new business leaders to come out and make some real changes in the business, in the business world. I am often asked by the faculty how they can teach ethics in their own way to their students. And the best response that I have is to make sure that you include ethics in all courses. I think that it's completely appropriate in all courses to include a discussion about ethical behavior, honesty, and transparency. A lot of opportunities. It's something we really need some work and assistance with. It's exciting, interesting topic because it cuts all the way through every business, gets into some very emotional and very challenging issues, and it takes a lot of moral courage to step up and say something's not right, you know, when something isn't right. So it's a very exciting area, and I think a great area to be studying right now.